Have you ever designed a party and someone was like, Hey, you know, you should really make a business out of this. But you don't know where to start? I have eight amazing tips that are going to help you jumpstart your event designing business to help you attract paying clients. Hey designers, welcome back to my channel with my inspiring designs with me, Justine, where all I want to do is inspire the event designer in you. When I first started my event designing business, I actually felt super lost and confused because there was really nothing out there but a few videos on how to actually start and a business. There was really no clear direction. There was no one going over step by step on how to start. So in this video, I will actually am going to help you and cover eight tips to jumpstart your event designing business. Step number one is target your market. In order to target your market, you have to identify your niche. Now, I talked about this in this particular video right here, so make sure you go check this out after this video but you want to be super clear on the niche that way you know who you're attracting so if you want to do corporate events baby showers weddings sweet 16s um non-profit organization events you have to be super clear on your niche and what market you're trying to target you also have to do your competitors research you have to know what's going on in your local area if you don't know how will you know? So make sure you guys are kind of snooping around. Shh, don't tell no one. Don't worry, your secret's safe with me. In order to find out what are your competitors doing, what are they charging, what do their packages look like, think about those particular questions when it comes to targeting your market. The biggest mistake that most event designers do when they first start their business is they target everyone. That is the biggest no-no. Don't do that. Now, I'm going to show you that even big corporations that are outside of event design still niche down. And I'm going to show you one. So, close your eyes. Now, I want you to think of Nike. What is Nike known for? McDonald's. Now, we all know who they're trying to target. Targeting your market is super important and super niche it down. Be very specific on who you're trying to target and make sure your content, your packages, and everything about your business is for those type of people, okay? Number two is to identify your ideal client. Now, in this particular video right here on the mistakes that I made as an event designer, I talked about identifying a, an ideal client. So you might want to go check that video out. I'll link it down below, and it walks you step by step of how to identify that client. Most people will skip this part. In fact, when I jump on coaching calls with potential event designers who want to jumpstart their business, they don't want to do this part. They're like, oh, it's just everyone. No, you have to niche down. Once you have your target market, then you have to have your ideal client. They walk hand in hand. You cannot have the one without the other. Number three is identifying your business name and making sure that it's available. If you have a business name already that you have in mind or you're on social media, make sure to write it down in the comments below so that way we can support each other. I might DM you and just be like, hey, I saw you watch this video. <laughs> the number one thing I did when it came to purchasing anything for my business, before the linens, before the backdrop stands, before anything, I purchased my domain. Okay, GoDaddy.com is a great source, one of the greatest sources that I use when it came to purchasing my domain name. So if you want to go check that out, make sure that your name is available. And what a domain name means is that anytime someone types in www.MyInspiringDesigns.com, they're sent to my website, regardless of what platform I use when it comes to my website. So although my website is on Wix.com and they have their own domain, Domain for it I merge the domain I purchased with Wix and now they are as one they act like one the number one mistake most people make is ensuring that their name is not available you want to make sure your name is available on multiple platforms so when I created my inspiring designs I checked on YouTube to see if it was available I checked on Instagram Facebook my website 
everything. Even if I wasn't going to utilize all of them, at least I knew they were available. I created those accounts so that way they all tied together and they were as one when it came to my business. Number four is to develop a business plan. Yes, yes, no, don't skip this part, yes. You have to develop a business plan. If you don't develop the business plan, how will you know where you're going with your business? Yes, yeah, some of you was like, ah, it's just a side hustle, Justine. I don't need it. I'm good. All right, you're going to be just like me. You're going to make the same mistakes I did. The one thing I do on my coaching calls is I guide my students on developing a plan for their particular niche or their particular event designing business. Because without a plan, you won't know where to go. The plan is not set in stone. It's meant to be erased, scratched, and altered. But at least you have a clear foundation and goals that you have for your business. One question that you can ask for yourself is, how much do you want your business to make? And when do you expect to meet that goal? And work backwards. So you wanna make sure you're thinking about those things when it comes to your business. Number five on how to jumpstart your event designing business and some of you are not going to like what I'm going to say because I say it in almost every video and I'm kind of tired of saying it but it needs to be said practice 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 I can't stress this enough if you don't practice your designs how will you get better do not wait for someone to book you first of all no one's going to book you because you have nothing to show for it. Part of tracking, attracting those clients is to showcase what we're doing. We are designers. There's no way around saying, oh, I can do this for you. Yeah, I can do the white backdrop and this and that. A client will not purchase that from you until they trust you and or they see what you can do. Even family or friends, they, they have expectations. So you want to make sure you're delivering that by practicing. You want to make sure that you guys focus on one thing, one design. That's it. I know so many designers who go into this business and offering so much. Yes, you're talented. Yes, you're absolutely great at what you do. But if you don't focus on one thing, your clients won't know what you can deliver for them. Because if you're all over the place and you're offering this and offering that, you won't get far. A huge mistake a lot of people make is not telling people what they do. Make sure on your digital platforms that you are showcasing and telling people what you offer. It takes about 10 times for a person to remember what you do when they need you. Okay, so for example, if a person needs a baby shower... They need to see your posts and your stories at least 10 times in order to consider you for that event. That And it can be, sometimes it's not even the first thought, it's consistency. So you want to make sure you're consistent on those digital platforms. So number six is marketing your business. Your clients are on social media. You guys have to get out of that stone age and think that your clients are not there. They're there. They're waiting for you. But you have to figure out a way to get in front of them so that way they know that you're there. Having your family and friends share your content is a great way for, especially if they're in your local area. Because you want to make sure you're expanding in your local area versus globally, which we which can happen on social media platforms. So make sure you're targeting your ideal clients using those hashtags, using locations on each post on Instagram, doing whatever you got to do to niche down where you want your clients from. So if you live in Portland, you want to make sure you're not attracting clients from Paris, France. No shade on them, but you just, I mean, unless they're willing to pay for you to travel. I mean, shoot, you're better than me. Another way to market your business that worked huge for me, and I'm talking huge, it can ran itself, is to build relationships with vendors. Now, I worked in, when I first started, I wanted to be, I don't know if I wanted to be a wedding planner, but I knew I wanted to plan events, but I ended up not doing it. However, one thing I did learn from wedding planners and event planners is that they know how to build relationships with vendors. Because if you scratch their back, they'll scratch yours. You give them customers, they'll give you customers. So make sure you're building those relationships with vendors. So if people who bake cakes, who do desserts, who do balloon grounds, anyone who's doing anything outside of what you do, build that relationship and remember them. And then send them a few clients along the way. Because one thing they will do, they will remember you helped them and they got you back the next time. Number seven is to create systems. 
Oh boy, we could sit here for hours and hours, but we won't. Here are the my top systems that I had to create, especially when I started my event designing business. Storage. Where are you going to store your inventory? How are you going to develop and know how much you have? How do you keep track of it? Is it on an Excel sheet, Google Sheets? How do you keep track of everything that you have in your storage, whether it's in your closet or in your garage or an actual storage space? You want to make sure you have a system in place to keep track of everything like that. Another way is how do you meet your clients? When you meet your clients, what goes on in there? How do you introduce yourself? How do you close the sale? How do you book the client? How do you build that relationship that if they're not ready to pay right now, what do you do after? Do you send them an email? Do you collect their emails? Do you, you know, you have to build those systems on when it comes to meeting your clients. Booking your clients. So now your client came to you, they want to book you. What is the first step that they have to go through? You know, how do you get the payment from them? How much of the payment are you getting them? Are they signing a contract? Are you going to walk through the pro process of how you're going to design their events? Do you need to go to their location? Those are huge questions you need to ask when it comes to designing events and creating those systems when you book your client. Another system is planning for events. Yes, event designers have to plan. Okay, just a different type of plan. You have to plan out what type of designs you're creating for the event. Okay, what does that process look like? As soon as you get your deposit or full payment, how do you go about the process of ordering all the things that you need, the items, the balloons, the stands, the linens, anything that you need for that particular event? What are those systems in place that you do in order to plan for that design? The last example would be how do you collect payment? What is your system? Do you have a greeting saying thank you so much for booking with me? And do you have reminders that are sent to your clients to sit here and say, hey, your payment is due at this time, just want to send you a reminder. You want to create those systems. And remember, when you create a system, it's just basically a strategic plan, step by step, on how to execute that particular goal. So create those systems. The last thing, the eighth thing you need to do to jumpstart your event designing business is get reviews and testimonials. This is the one thing I didn't do. Yes, I'm ashamed to admit it. I know. But you need to do that. Testimonials and reviews speak for themselves. It literally promotes your business to have the clients trust you. You're not on your social media all the time, all day. But your testimonials and your reviews will speak for itself. So when people come to your page and they find you, now they have a way of doing that. A great way to create your reviews and testimonials is to send like an exit survey for your clients especially those who had a great experience those who you like oh my god I'm going to I'm gonna make sure everybody knows about you because you need to design every single party that we do in the future those particular clients you need to keep make sure they're giving you reviews on your Facebook page on your website on Google whatever Okay, <laughs> you want to keep those. Those who are not really raving, make sure you just kind of slip them an email like an exit survey. Hey, how did we do? Okay, and then that way you can screenshot and put this somewhere. Like if it's on Instagram, you can include it as a highlight, testimonials, and then just push it out there to let people know that you do a great job. And don't discriminate against your family and friends. No one will know that cousin John is your cousin. It'll just say John. Don't sit here and discriminate against your family and friends. If your family and friends absolutely enjoyed what you did, have them write a review. That's the one thing I did when it came to my business is that I had my family act like my clients. Technically, they trusted me with their events, so technically they were a client. Were they a full paying client? No. But my work spoke for itself. So you want to make sure you're collecting those reviews and testimonials. That is it. That is all my eight amazing tips that you need to jumpstart your event designing business. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. I hope you guys are designing your dreams into realities. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye. It's just like having two partners joining to be married, okay? You cannot have the one without the other. It's just like cereal without milk. You can't do it. Some of you put water in your milk, in your cereal. Why? Why would you do that?